Good morning from the garden. My name is Robin. I garden in Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut. Are you tired of hearing me say that already? So it's the end of the season. It's time to get the garden cleaned up and prepared for winter. We're getting all the dahlias um, cut and uh, washed and dried. So please subscribe, hit that like button. It really does make a difference. Let's dig up our dahlias. It's that time of the year. Um, if you're in a zone like I am, zone six, dahlias cannot stay in the ground. So there are a lot of different types of dahlias. So I'm gonna show you mine this year. We're all in containers. I know this is gonna be a little repetitive. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with those. And then I'm gonna go back um, at the end and show you how you actually dig them up out of the ground like I did last year. So uh, let's get to digging our dahlias. If you're in a zone where you're lucky enough to keep them in the ground, God bless you, because it is definitely a job. And I know a lot of people just treat them as annuals because it's a lot of work to store them and not everybody has room to store them. Well, we've had our first real killing frost. So it's time, you can see the dahlias are all, they're kaput, they're all gone. So it's time to get these cut dug up. Now I have mine all in pots this year so it should be very easy to take care of. So I'm going to cut the stalk off, save my tags, and I'm going to just try <laughs> to get these out of the pots. Okay, so oops, first. Uh, actually, I want the dirt, so let me come back over here. Grab a bucket. Okay. So we're just going to take off as much excess dirt as we can, so we can get to the tubers. When they're in pots, they they pretty well fill the. Um, well, fill out the, the containers, I've got to say. So we're going to be checking for bulbs that are rotten. Uh, you know, since we're not digging with a pitchfork, uh, we shouldn't really have to worry about, you know, that kind of damage. Um, and I'm probably going to have to wash these off. You know, obviously we don't want anything that's rotten. We don't want anything. Worms in here when we put these into storage. Um, we can cut off all this extra stuff, but right off the bat, so here's this is Krypton honey. So you can see that one tuber, you know, gave us, you know, a whole bunch of tubers. Now it's a little hard to see, sorry, um, because it's filthy. We're going to wash these off and then I'm going to put them in my greenhouse and I'm going to cover them with a frost cloth um, because I do have a heater running in there. Not very warm, but I don't want these um, you know, thinking it's time to grow again either. Okay, so I'm just getting most of the dirt off. You can see I have a lot of tubers here. Um, will I, you know, divide these? Uh, it just depends. I, I usually wouldn't divide in the fall. I would divide in the spring just because I haven't had great luck with um, overwintering. Last year I had really good luck. So what I'm also going to do beside, you know, my tags, I'm going to go grab a piece of uh, tape and wrap it around here so I don't lose, um, you know, what variety this is. So let me go grab that. Show you, and let me show you this close up. Okay, so here is Crichton honey, and so that's you know all from one tuber. So we're gonna clean this off, we're gonna tag it really well, um, and then we're gonna let it dry out for a couple of days before we pop it in vermiculite. And I've shown you that process before, I'll try and show it to you again, or I'll link the video below. Okay, so I've tagged this. I've wrapped it around so it doesn't come off, even though I have my, you know, permanent tags and stuff. I've also gone inside and rinsed this off because now all, all our water is off outside. Um, and I just wanted to be able to show this to you. I also cut off 
you know, all these little little tendrils and spring uh, strings um, and any little, any really little um, tubers that I know are not gonna, you know, amount to anything. So that's the process. I've got all these to get through today. Um, and basically I'm not gonna start really getting these all cleaned up. I just wanted to show this to you. So I am gonna cut these all, I'm gonna take them all out of the um, containers and put them in, uh, rinse them off, and then put them in my greenhouse to dry. I mean, a good reason to, to clean these things off is, see this is rotten? You would never have seen that if you just left it full of dirt. And then when you store it over the winter, it would, you know, it would ruin the entire um, tuber um, or all the tubers in that container. This one is no good too. So if you rinse them off, it's really kind of the best way you can see. You can see here, there's a ton of damage right here. So I'm gonna cut all that off. So again, I have these all tagged. I'm gonna put them upside down in my greenhouse and let them dry for a couple of days because you don't wanna put them away soaking wet. Like I said, I wrapped mine in vermiculite. Oh, I see something I forgot to take off. And um, I'm gonna check them again for anything that's moldy that I might've missed. But again, I'm gonna put them upside down so they dry, cover them with a frost cloth. Okay, these are the dahlias we didn't get to yesterday. We did bring them all underneath the deck. I'm hoping the soil has dried out a little bit. The ones I did yesterday were a little wet, so it was kind of uh, a pain in the neck to try to get the, the uh, dirt off the tubers. Um, and then I will cut them down and we'll start drying these. Um, and then we'll be bringing them in, putting them in vermiculite in the bulb crates that I'm emptying with the bulbs. So between that and we're also you know, getting all our pots washed um, and trying to get all our outdoor furniture in and cleaned up. And right now what we have in the hoop house here is just dirt to keep it dry. So that's uh, one of the chores for today. I don't think we'll get to that on top of all the bulbs, but we're sure as hell gonna try. So what I did yesterday, like I said, sorry, it was so loud yesterday. I got these all washed and I have them drying upside down so I can dry them as much as possible. Um, you only want to dry them for a day or two, but then, you know, I tried to get most of the dirt off of them because you don't want to put them away. I tried to inspect them all, make sure all the, um, 
make sure all the tubers were in good shape. Tried to get rid of anything that looked moldy. And just to be on the safe side, number one, the temperature in the greenhouse right now is a little fluctuating. So I'm actually keeping these covered just to try to protect them from the ups and downs. Now I already have my, I have a couple roses I showed you the other day in here. And that's gonna stay in here. And I'm probably, my dahlias are gonna go in the garage. So you can see I do already have a couple of roses in here, um, which I talked about the other day. Now I do uh, occasionally have my dahlias in the ground, um, just this year I particularly didn't, but this is a clip from last year. So when your dahlias are in the ground, you're gonna dig them. I use a pitchfork, I see most people use a pitchfork. Uh, go about a foot out from the crown of the dahlia. So you, the idea is that you don't wanna poke a hole through the tubers and ruin them. Um, so carefully, you know, work your way around the dahlia um, and then when you get them out of the ground, you can cut off, you know, the long stalks, um, leave a little bit um, so you can, you know, have something to turn them upside down maybe um, and let them dry for a day or two. Um, like I just showed you, I did with the ones that I took out of the pots. Um, you can, again, cut off all the little strings and tendrils and the tiny little bulbs. You know, sometimes it's harder than, than others um, to, to get some of them out of the ground. Just keep working it lightly all the way. Keep going around, keep going around until you can actually lift the clump up. Um, the great thing about dahlias is, you know, you put one tuber in the ground and by the end of the season, some, some uh, varieties make so many tubers. The other thing is, tubers come in all shapes and sizes, so don't think um, a tuber is not viable just because it's a different shape. Um, so again, you know, take, take your time, lift the clump carefully, um, don't just go yank it, yank it out of the ground. Um, actually get in there, shake off as much dirt as you can. Now, I know some people like to so store them dirty, um, I have found that that doesn't work great for me. Our soil is typically very wet. I'm at the bottom of a mountain <laughs> hill. Um, and I find if I wash them off, um, I can usually um, spot any problems before I store them. Again, you don't want to put anything that's got, um, you know, a hole in it or it's rotten. I mean, things happen. Um, you know, they're in the ground for the whole season. So carefully inspect them. And at that point, you know, you can start uh, saving them. Now, I always, um, in the last couple of years, I have been saving mine in vermiculite. That has worked for me. And last year I put them in my garage and that actually worked. It was the first year that I had really good success, like everything came back, which I don't know if that was a good thing, uh, because I had already ordered a ton of dahlias, um, anticipating that they weren't going to, going to come back. So um, just, you know, uh, prepare your, your container, whatever you're putting them in, something breathable. I use bulb crates, you can use collapsible crates, you could use cardboard boxes. Um, and you should be good to go for, um, you know, uh, next season. Check them over the winter. Make sure they're not shriveling. If they are, miss them a little bit. Don't wet them down, but miss them a little bit. And you should have good luck, um, hopefully, with your dahlias surviving all winter long. <laughs> this is how I save my dahlias. It worked for me last year. Um, so I'm taking a bulb crate and I'm covering it with a nice thick burlap, not one with lots of holes in it. Now you can use any collapsible container. Then next I'm going to fill the bottom with a little bit of vermiculite. The good thing with the burlap that's tightly weaved is it won't 
let the vermiculite out, which is the whole point. Okay. Then let's get our dahlias in here before they start shriveling up. Okay, my dahlias are all tagged with some flagging tape. Okay, I've checked all the tubers. I think I've gotten rid of, uh, you know, anything that was damaged. I've cut off all the little roots. And I'm just going to put these down in the vermiculite. Like I said, I'm just carefully checking them again. You can clean them up again in the spring, whatever. Again, everything is got a tag on it. Put them in so they're not touching. If you see something that's, this is kind of, you know, wobbly, gonna just take that off. Okay. These have been drying for two days. And the idea is that you're going to want to cover these. That needs a bigger box. <laughs> Let's get this in. Again, just check them as you're putting them in. You do want to try to make sure that, um, you know, I, I do moisten the vermiculite a little bit. the tape tied around a tuber and around the stem um, so it won't come off if you just tie it around the stem as this dries you could actually lose it okay let's get dad's favorite in there and let's see if we can get something else in here Cutting these stems a little shorter. Okay, so there's our layer. We're gonna take more vermiculite and cover this up. Again, lightly moistened. And then over the winter, I will go and check this. I just poured the vermiculite into this just because it was easier for me to pour than out of the big, big bag I bought. things in there try and get things covered as much as you can and then you're just going to wrap your burlap up and I'm gonna put mine in the garage it's that simple now check periodically maybe once a month uh, go check and make sure they're not drying out if they're shriveling it's missed a little water in there and you should be good to go let me know how, how what method you're using are you using the saran wrap method are you using pine shavings um you know what what do you do do you do vermiculite and where do you store yours i don't have a great storage place um i have an unheated hoop house and a greenhouse that's going to have some heat and an unheated garage but the garage is typically I'd say like 55 degrees in the winter time. My basement is definitely heated because um, you probably can hear the heater running right now. So this is what I do. Let me know what you do.